All right, well, this is part two of the David Brown 1210 fixed together. I don't know, I don't really want to call it a restoration because we don't really plan on restoring it, but just enough to get it back using and looking good. Now, some of y'all may remember in my earlier video about it, the belt had come off of it, and to change the belt was a really, really big job. Uh, a lot bigger job than what I thought just to change the belt on something. We end up having to take the hydraulic pump loose and take all the lines loose. And then you have to scoot the shaft forward, but to actually scoot it forward, the pump's gotta be loose and you have to take those four bolts off the crank um, just to get one belt on. So that's a pretty good job. Um, these little squares here was full of dirt, probably 10 pounds worth of dirt and there's still crud in them. Um, I guess assuming probably where the tractor has leaked hydraulic fluid or oil throughout the years and it's just never been cleaned. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'd like to scrape. We tried pressure washing some of it off, but I didn't really want to pressure wash it too much. Um, I'm hoping maybe when we get it running and use it once it gets hot, all this stuff may kind of ease off of it. Uh, but what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to try to put everything back together, uh, try to put these lines back. And uh, we'll see maybe another part of this video or maybe a later part. We'll see if I can't maybe get some footage changing the wheels. Um, this back wheel finally did give out on me. I knew it would eventually, uh, but I tried to air it up and it blew the valve stem and you can see it's still leaking water. But that's okay. We've got two wheels we're going to put on it. No big deal. Um, you can tell, obviously, the tractor's got some leaks. I don't know exactly what it's leaking, but we'll see if we can't figure it out as we go. The hood's fairly straight. Uh, there's one little dented piece down here. Um, probably end up just trying to maybe peck it out just a little and then sand it and paint the hood. The fenders on this tractor is actually in really good shape. I'll probably just sand those down and paint those too. Gonna have to get us a new seat. So we have everything put back together. We have these four bolts here. Tighten this hose back up. Tighten these four bolts back up. And there's four little Allen head screws, and there's a return line that comes out of this. We went ahead and changed the O-ring in there, too. Like I said, I have never saw the amount of dirt come off a tractor, and there's nowhere near it being perfect. Um, but like I said, we're going to use it for a little bit, and then we'll clean on it a little bit more. Uh, put us a new Gates belt on here. So, Dad, he's went up to the house to get the radiator, and we'll see if we can put the radiator back on it. Oh, Howie, he's slumped. Yeah, he's going to take a nap down here in the gravel. So it's a little bit after we got our radiator and everything put back on. Thought I'd just take just a little bit of time to bring out scraper and small screwdriver. This is the part that nobody really wants to admit about fixing up old tractors, but they're full of crud. And if you don't want crud to be on them forever, you gotta, you know, take it off. A David Brown with a drive shaft up front. That's definitely interesting. So it's been a couple days since uh, putting the belt on the 1210. I want to go ahead and kind of tell you a little thing that I do. With these tractors, it's a little different than what most people do with them. I don't paint it back the orchid white. I always go back with the IH white, this magic brand they sell at Tractor Supply. I painted my other one this, and it worked really, really good. I used the uh, the paint type just like this and just straight up brushed it on the wheels, and it dried really, really slick. And then I got the spray paint and sprayed the hood and, or sprayed the hood and the fenders. But we'll use this as our wheel paint, and then we, uh, and like I said, the spray paint for the fenders, hood, stuff like that. And then there's a chocolate brown Rust-Oleum color that I'll show you a little later on in the series. Step one, we've got this one jacked up, cribbed up. 
we're going to end up pulling both these wheels off here and changing them around so we'll follow you along to the next step right now if you haven't seen the other part of my video this is my junk two-wheel drive 1210 i'm going to probably end up pulling the loader off this one and definitely pulling the back rims off and wheels and i maybe one day i'm going to put the loader on but definitely we're going to change the wheels around so probably the first time that tar has been off the ground in 10 years so anyone that's ever fooled with uh taking tractor tars on and off you know that they're real heavy so we're going to use front end loader on them Dad thinks these tars are going to air up, so we're going to see if they're going to air up. I've set you down for just a little bit. Well, it's definitely taking air. Well, that groove right there has disappeared, so maybe it is taking air. Never have used one of these before on a angle grinder, but I picked one up at Tractor Supply this morning. We're gonna try it out, see if we can bust some of the paint off this wheel. We're gonna go ahead and paint the inside of the wheel, so that way whenever it dries, we can just put it on the axle and forget about it. Dad, he's gonna get the outside with this side grinder or angle grinder. So I was able to kind of scuff around with that grinder on the outside rim and inside center. Now before you all get any more interested in these series, if you're looking for a nut and bolt restoration, this is not it. This grinder here, we're just knocking off the loose paint. We're gonna throw that big heavy enamel on it and we're gonna let it ride. So if you're looking for a nut and bolt restoration, don't stay tuned. For my use of the tractor, a nut and bolt restoration would be kind of silly. If it runs good, looks halfway good from the road that's what i'm worried about we end up getting the inside of this one painted i think i'm actually going to put these like this on the inside and then have the other dish face on the outside but we'll see if we can't go ahead and get things kind of changed around maybe for you once this dries If anyone knows anything about spin out, it's real bad to start rusting. And this one did. We're going to take every one of them off, but we're going to leave the top one. Which this is on the other side, but you can tell right through here how bad a shape they are. It looks like they've actually tried to be welded back before. The rims are real rusty. So we're just going to get rid of these. AKA get rid of them by putting on a junk tractor. So in the world of tractor physics, I guess that that direction probably wouldn't help, but eh, it's all right for the junker. Now the reason it's like that is because we took the one off that side to put on the opposite side. So you can't really flip that one out. Um, if that wheel that we took off was flipped to the inside, it would be the backwards tread too. 
since we have this hub off, I thought I'd show you guys a little David Brown secret. So if you look, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. Maybe it will. If you look back in here at my finger, there's a grease zerk. And these hubs have got special holes in the in between the uh, lug nuts and between the actual, I guess, center hub where you can stick a grease gun back in there and grease those. Those are seals that's supposed to keep that final drive from leaking out gear oil. And there's actually notches on those wheels back there that line up with these holes. So that's a little trick. We actually kind of looked for probably 10, 15 minutes digging this one out. Uh, but I think nine, my 990 has this, and so now my 1210 has it. So before we get this wheel back on, we're going to see if we can go ahead and paint this because it's a lot easier to get to it now than versus after the wheel's being put on. So I'm just taking a wire wheel right now and just kind of busting off the majority of the dirt. Then we'll bring a bucket of water down here and we'll uh, cover up, rub it down the alcohol, and see if I got any paint left. I guess I may even try to get some of that back in there too. Got the majority of the dirt beat off of it. We're gonna wipe it down with alcohol and spray it. Now earlier in the video, I showed you about using IH white. I don't know if they still have this color or not. I sure hope they do, because this is all we have left. But this is Rust-Oleum Satin Espresso. And it almost dries almost like a chocolate. I, I, I know that a lot of your older David Browns, they didn't really, um, didn't really look chocolatey. Uh, like a real real dark chocolate but this one dries almost like a milk chocolate um, i really like how it looks with that ih white there's kind of a little sneak peek of what color it turns out to be once again if you guys clicked on a nut and bolt restoration video sorry it's not what it is we're just trying to clean it up throw some paint on it make it last a little longer this is just part two of the series as we go and as we make some progress, I'll make some more and hopefully we'll have a whole combination out by the end. Thank you all. If you all like my videos, please like, subscribe, hit the notification button, whatever it is. Thank you all.